life, the condition that distinguishes living creatures from inorganic matter, including the ability to grow, reproduce, age and function on a daily basis. All of this until the final, definite truth, death. When provided with the suitable conditions, life will flicker into existence, and from there, it will evolve, taking diverse forms, intricate structures, and complex characteristics. If we apply these laws of life on Earth, to the trillions of planets in our known universe, elsewhere, life must have blossomed too. Researchers believe that there are at least 100 billion planets in the Milky Way alone. But like I said, that is an estimate. The confirmed number, according to NASA, now stands at 5,000 plus counting. But how many potentially habitable planets are there? And then how many actually harbor life? That second question remains unanswered, since decades now. The first one, we know plenty of by now. Planets that not only can give rise to an environment, but also maintain its hospitality to life. Some hundred habitable exoplanets have been found till date. While all the candidates are unique in their own way, some actually stand out and how. Today, we are talking about the TRAPPIST-1 star system, which lies about 40 light years away, and is the most studied planetary system after Earth. Um, by humans, if I may. The TRAPPIST-1 system is so significant that in its lap lies seven worlds. Seven magnificent worlds with the potential for having water on their surface. And not just that, closer study of the seven planets in 2018 suggested that some could harbor far more water than the oceans of Earth. To find proof, we need a powerful tool, because so far, Due to technological limitations, we've been unable to ascertain a critical characteristic of these planets, whether they have atmospheres or not. Now thanks to advanced space observatories like the James Webb Space Telescope, this seems possible. If we ever do find life on other worlds, it is unlikely to be a powerful message from space. It's certainly possible that an alien civilization specifically sends us a message like a scene out of contact. But the more likely scenario is that we end up observing some kind of biological signature in an exoplanet's atmosphere, such as nitrogen or carbon dioxide. But as a recent study demonstrates, while in theory that sounds good, in practice, it may be much harder. But, there is reason to be hopeful still. We are already able to image quite some exoplanets directly, and have found substances such as water in their atmospheres. The planets we've been able to directly study are all gas giants, though. We haven't been able to image the Earth-sized planets in a star's Goldilocks zone yet, but there is a move we can use to study their atmospheres. This time, the decades-old tale of the quest for alien life in the most studied planetary system beyond our own, aka Trappist system, has had yet another twist, this time in an hopeful direction. Taking the previously neglected factors into account, new research now rejects the theory that planets like TRAPPIST-1e were once so hot their crusts turned into magma oceans that blasted all their water into space as vapor. If it stands up to further investigation, this study would potentially overcome the most common objection to the possibility of life warmed by the universe's most common class of stars. The biggest question in the hunt for alien life beyond our solar system, arguably, is whether there's even any point in looking at these common M-type stars, known as red dwarfs. This category makes up three quarters of the galaxy's sources of light. It's an even larger percentage once you remove the massive stars with lifespans that are too short to allow life to develop. At the center of this discussion lies the TRAPPIST-1 system consisting of seven terrestrial planets encircling an M-type star that is positioned just 40 light-years away. Among these, three planets exist within the region where current temperatures are conducive to supporting life. Regrettably, there have been objections put forth asserting that these planets are located within the habitable zones of red dwarf stars that would have likely lost their atmospheres in the distant past. 
rendering them hostile for habitation. If this holds true, our endeavors to investigate these systems for signs of life might be unproductive, leading us to shift our attention to the limited number of F, G, and K-type stars that we can observe more effectively. The challenge is not solely tied to the tendency of numerous red dwarfs to emit flares that potentially erode any atmospheres, but also to the fact that M-type stars that undergo an early, harder phase in their development, coupled with the greenhouse effect caused by water in the planet's atmospheres, this would have caused the entire planet's surface to melt, allowing any water which is contained within the rocks to escape. If this phase persisted for an extended duration, as is common with stars that change gradually, all atmospheric water would be lost into space. In such cases, the likelihood of volcanic mechanisms restoring the planet's atmospheres once the star had cooled sufficiently to enable survival is minimal. A new model studying the atmospheres of the planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system counters the hypothesis that they would have experienced such extreme temperatures. Earlier models had taken a different approach, assuming that the atmospheres of the TRAPPIST-1 planets were entirely convective during their star's hardest phase. However, a team led by Dr. Frank Celsius from the University of Bordeaux points out that this is not the case. Instead, a combination of convection and radiation processes would have operated within these planetary atmospheres. It is plausible that life could have emerged from this point onward. While it is established that the innermost planets of TRAPPIST-1, namely 1b and 1c, lack substantial atmospheres, our knowledge about 1d, 1e, and 1f the planets residing within the current habitable zone remains limited. This study suggests it is worth directing our attention not only to these planets, but also to those revolving around similar stars. Interestingly, there is an irony to this situation when we compare it to our own Sun. In its early stages, the Sun was way cooler than it is today, which has posed quite some challenges in explaining the evidence of water flow on Mars during that time. Nonetheless, models that only considered convection had proposed a period in which Venus was so scorching that it too lost all of its water. This study casts doubt on that notion. All said and done, scientists will need to conduct a lot more research before they can arrive at definitive conclusions about the possibility of life in the TRAPPIST system. But what do I know? Orbit Beyond the Blue